There is a tremendous amount of misinformation being posted about how Samsung is faking their moon photos. But are they really fake? Here's the truth with the math and the examples to prove it, explained by an engineer who actually understands it and isn't just taking guesses. So a quick background on me, I'm Eric from Techisode TV. I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and I worked as a hardware engineer for 12 years. While that doesn't automatically qualify me to talk about image processing, it does help me get a better understanding of what's going on. And I do have some experience with image processing using convolution kernels back in college. And you'll see why that's important in a minute. So the short version of this faking images issue is that a Reddit user took a picture of the moon, downscaled it considerably, blurred that image, then took a picture of that image with their Samsung phone and got a very detailed picture of the moon as a result. Because of this, Samsung's being accused by many people of either faking their moon photos by just replacing them with other images of the moon, or Samsung's artificial intelligence is simply cheating and creating detail out of nothing based on other images of the moon. Now here's where things get complicated and we need to dive deeper into two things. First, how do we define the word real when referring to photos? That question will make sense in a minute. And second, we need to know exactly how Samsung is improving the moon photos and if they're applying the same type of enhancements to all photos taken with the 100 times zoom, not just the moon photos. Before I get into this, I wanna make it clear that what I'm about to say is not a defense of Samsung, but it's important to discuss so that the next part of this video makes sense. So a large part of this issue comes down to how we define the word real. For example, if I take a picture of the moon with my iPhone 14 Pro Max, it looks something like this. Just a white blob and you really can't tell that it's the moon. This is the real image captured by the phone, but it's not a real representation of what I saw with my eyes, nor does it accurately represent the image in my memory. And isn't that why we take photos and videos in the first place? To better capture memories so we can reflect back on them later? But there's still an issue here, and it's a matter of how the images are improved. You see, if Samsung just recognized a blurry moon in a photo, then found a better image online and replaced your image with the image that they found online, this would not be an accurate representation of what you saw. It may be pretty close, but it would still be a different picture of the moon taken on a different day from a different place in the world. And most importantly, Samsung would have no right to boast about their moon photography. Fortunately, that's not the case. Let me explain. Samsung has an entire article written up about how they enhance moon photos using artificial intelligence or AI for short. According to the article, the first thing they do is take at least 10 pictures and use image processing to remove noise and combine the most detailed portions of every image. The image is further enhanced with artificial intelligence, which has been trained to recognize the moon in every phase. To oversimplify things, this basically allows your phone to act like a person opening up Adobe Photoshop and using its tools to extract as much detail as possible out of your photo. Except the difference is that instead of a person doing this for you, it's artificial intelligence. But is that really enough to turn this Reddit image into this moon photo? Actually, yeah. And I believe it has to do with the fact that the Reddit user blurred the moon photo using a Gaussian blur. Now this is incredibly important because a Gaussian blur is literally the exact opposite of what Samsung is doing with their convolution neural network. Think of it like having a bunch of numbers that represent the individual pixels of an image. A Gaussian blur is kind of like taking each one of those pixels and adding or subtracting a certain number from them. This will change the image enough to blur it, but it will still resemble the original image. Gaussian blur is a bit more involved than this, but this is the basic concept. What Samsung is doing is the literal opposite. After analyzing likely hundreds of thousands of images of the moon, Samsung's artificial intelligence knows that an image with a specific amount of blur in specific places will likely be substantially improved by doing the opposite math of a Gaussian blur. But this is further complicated because a Gaussian blur could use almost any set of numbers to modify the original image. Not only that, but the Reddit user reduced the image size to just 170 by 170 pixels, removing a tremendous amount of detail before they applied the Gaussian blur. So Samsung's artificial intelligence has to take a best guess and likely won't be a perfect match. So in our example, if this was the Gaussian blur math that the Reddit user used, this could be Samsung's equation to try to reverse it. Notice that it's not perfect because again, it's a best guess. When this math is done, you'll get a significantly improved image. And if you overlay the Reddit user's original 170 by 170 pixel photo with Samsung's moon photo, you'll see that they are very closely matched. You'll also notice two other things. 
Samsung's photo has a brownish tint to it, and it completely lost detail around the outside edge of the moon. The loss of edge information is a direct result of how Samsung's equation works. It's something called a convolution neural network, and it would take a solid 10 plus minute video for me to explain that, so instead, I'll just link to a convolution video in the description if you want to get a better understanding of why the edge information is lost. As for the brown tint, this could be an artifact of convolution or Samsung Scene Optimizer adjusting the colors. But if I remove the tint, you can really see just how close Samsung was to perfectly reversing the Gaussian blur. Now what about the other picture where there is a perfectly gray patch placed on the moon and an identical patch placed off the moon? Why did the patch that was on the moon get modified, but not the patch that was off the moon? That's another simple answer. Remember our equation? A gray patch would be like changing a group of numbers to all ones. Samsung is still going to run their best guess math on the entire moon. This will result in the gray pixels getting changed slightly towards the texture of the moon, but you'll still mostly end up with the gray box or whatever other image you overlaid there. And the reason why the gray box outside the moon wasn't changed is because Samsung's artificial intelligence knows where the edges of the moon are and only applies the math to the moon part of the photo. This is also why Samsung's AI won't make any changes to partial moons that don't look like the traditional shape of a moon. This includes the fake half moon from the Reddit post, as well as a moon that's obscured by clouds. Samsung's AI can't figure out which parts are a blurred part of the moon and which parts are just clouds. If you're finding this information useful, sharing the video would be greatly appreciated because I'm pretty late to the party on this topic, but I wanted to make sure I had all the facts and fully understood them before posting. So no one's gonna see this video unless you share it. And if you do share this video, let me know you shared it by dropping a moon emoji in the comments below. Now it's great that Samsung isn't just image swapping, and let me know in the comments below if this level of AI image enhancements is acceptable to you, but there's one last big potential issue. Samsung touts their moon photos as an example of how powerful their cameras are. But if that only applies to moon photos, Samsung's misleading people to think that they can get excellent 100 times zoom photos of anything. But can you? Let's find out. I picked a few items ranging from common to obscure to really put the 100 times zoom to work. Now there are a few things going on when you take a 100 times zoom photo. First, the preview you see on the screen is not the image you're going to capture. It's a video feed simply to help you line up your shot. Once you tap the shutter button, the camera waits a second to make sure your hand stops shaking, then snaps at least 10 pictures as I mentioned earlier. From there, the photos are then processed in software to detect edges, reduce noise, and add back in as much detail as possible. This worked out excellently on the Rubik's Cube because of the solid colors. The picture of my kid's rider action figure pulled back a decent amount of detail, but it's not quite as crisp as the Rubik's Cube, likely because there's a lot more detail to try to pull back here, and it's not a common object that the AI could pick up on. I also had my wife help get a picture of me standing 175 feet away, which is about half the distance across a football field. And here's the result. The AI could figure out that it was a picture of a person and added back in a bunch of detail to my face. Then I really tried to break the AI and backed out all the way to 250 feet and had trees as the backdrop so the AI would have a harder time figuring out what the image was supposed to be. And sure enough, I found its limits. It was able to pull back some detail, but it's now far from a crisp image. That just leaves the photo of me and my wife, and this one did surprisingly well, getting much closer to the detail and colors of the original photo. It's still a little blurry, but that's a remarkable photo considering this is at a 100 times zoom. And it becomes even more remarkable when you look at the best you can do with an iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now to be clear, the iPhone's max zoom is only 15 times, so I had to zoom the rest of the way in using editing software. Regardless, it's clear that Samsung's 100 times zoom is not just some artificial intelligence image swapping foolery, it's the real deal. And you know what else is the real deal? This ring I have attached to the back of my phone. And if you want to learn more about it, you can check out this video here. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.